I've done deep dives about Pretty Little Liars with the other main liars. I've done literally all of them and I also want to cover Alison and Mona, but Spencer was one that I'm so excited for because today we're talking about how she kind of became the main character of the show out of nowhere. She just became the main character and like what happened, her relationships, her evolution through the show, problems with her character and more. So before we get started, make sure you subscribe and click the bell icon and then all for all notifications so you never miss another Pretty Little Lies video from me. I do have some more videos planned in this mini series and in general, I do commentary videos about movies and TV shows. So let's get into it. Spencer in the show is portrayed as a very competitive girl. She's got a great sense of humor, but she does strive for perfection in absolutely everything. I think out of all the liars, she was the most well-crafted character and the most well-developed character. Out of all the dynamics on the show, I believe that Spencer and Allison's dynamic is particularly fascinating because in the earlier seasons, you were actually worried that Spencer had something to do with Allison's appearance, appearance, disappearance, or that she'd hurt Allison somehow because of their weird connection. We don't see enough of them and see their connection developing, especially after the five year time jump, which is such a shame. I have so many different thoughts about her family, the way they treated her throughout the course of the show and how that changed, whether it was done well, whether it was done badly. The first big reveal that happens is that Spencer's father cheated with Jessica and so Jason is her half brother. The next big reveal is that Jessica De Laurentiis had a twin called Mary. Then we find out that Mary slept with Spencer's dad. I don't think he knew that either. So Mary is Spencer's biological mother and Veronica is her adoptive mum. Obviously we also find out she has a twin, which none of us knew about. With the twin reveal, in some ways, it makes perfect sense. It could seem like good writing because the whole show has been Spencer having these continuous ongoing problems with her family. Now with characters like Hannah, yeah, she was having problems with her dad, but he'd leave the show for a bit, then he'd come back, maybe there'd be some problems. But with Spencer, it was just this continuous ongoing drama with her family. So I was waiting for a moment with the twin reveal for her to be like almost having a cathartic moment like wow this explains everything i get why my family was so mean to me because they actually knew i wasn't related to them by blood or wow this is such a relief that to know why i always felt so out of place to know why i never fitted in to know why everyone was judging me all the time it doesn't really happen like yes she's shocked she has a twin she did not expect to have a twin but somehow it doesn't really bring everything together that we know about her family in a moment where she's like having this light bulb moment. Oh my God, this all makes sense. So somehow it's anticlimactic. It's like the show didn't understand how incredibly momentous that is in some ways when she's not really interacting with her dad in the finale and her sister very much. You barely even see Melissa in the finale. So therefore her having a twin is like, Okay, who cares? We all knew her family was relevant, but no one expected it to be as relevant as it was in the season finale. It was almost too predictable, like, oh no, they'll never do that. They've already done a similar thing a hundred times, especially when you look at the A reveal of CC Drake around season six. All of that reveal was tied to her difficult family history, her family not wanting her, her family not including her, and her being this secret relative of Alison's no one knew about. So they'd already done this before, this idea of, oh my God, I had a family member, I had no idea existed. So by repeating that with Spencer's twin, it actually seems very lazy. I almost wanted an A reveal in the finale that wasn't so closely related to you know, my family treated me badly and so I grew up 
feeling unloved because we've literally done that exact same thing with Cece Drake. If you look at the parallels between her and Alex, it's just like, come on guys, you're regurgitating the same formula and expecting us not to notice. And to be fair, a lot of people didn't notice, but I did. So it's annoying when you go back and rewatch the show and notice that. But Spencer is shown to be genuinely scared of her family and not trusting them at many points throughout the show. At one point she's thinking Melissa's on the A team. I mean at other points she is defending her sister but a lot of the time she really doesn't feel that safe around them especially when she says to Toby I've never had a safe place to land before or when she talked about how she tried to run away that one time and no one noticed she was gone. That's so sad and that's this common thing is that she just is like a ghost in her own family and everyone values Melissa more than her. She's always being pitted against Melissa and being compared to, to Melissa and constantly overshadowed in her sister's footsteps. The other girls, even when they were judging, you know, Byron for instance, I know at points Aria was very suspicious of Byron, but they never really took it to a place where she was like, I'm scared of this man. I'm worried he's going to hurt me. Not so much, whereas with Spencer's family, it was like that and that's a massively concerning thing that should have been explored more often and Melissa is so mean to Spencer especially in like season one and that is so much more than just your usual competition sibling rivalry arguments no their relationship was so toxic it was unbelievable and neither of them had respect for the other at all, but especially Melissa would be so unfairly mean towards Spencer. And obviously Spencer had no regard for kissing Melissa's boyfriends or anything. In season one, Melissa and Spencer are trying to mend their relationship, but Melissa clearly doesn't even care that much about Spencer because she's happy to flip out on her whenever it suits her. And she doesn't really trust her even if she says, oh, we're working on our problems. We're developing our relationship because she finds Ian's self phone in Spencer's purse, which was planted there by the way, but rather than being open-minded and listening to Spencer when Spencer says, that's I did not do anything with his phone, what's that doing in my purse? She should have listened, right? But instead, she starts blaming Spencer, saying, wait, were you pretending to be Ian and texting me and blah blah blah, and like, why would Spencer do that? Melissa judges Spencer so much and looks down on her so much and really thinks that Spencer would go out of her way to torment Melissa pretending to be Ian or something. Like, why would Spencer do that? Even I know that, and I'm not even Spencer's sister. She clearly does not know Spencer at all, or she hasn't bothered to get to know her, because if she just spent like 10 minutes talking to Spencer, she would know that Spencer would never do something like that, and that's such an unfairly harsh judgment. And the way that she would flip out on Spencer and be hot and cold was really cruel. It says a lot too that when Ian kissed Spencer, which is obviously completely gross, Spencer didn't feel comfortable telling her family and didn't trust them to actually you know, support her. And that's a common thing is she's trying to tell them subtly, oh, I'm not really comfortable with Ian, but they're not actually picking up on how unsafe she feels with Ian, which again shows they're on completely different planets. And the amount of emotional manipulation and brainwashing Melissa used was honestly awful. She'd turn everything against Spencer and make everything Spencer's fault. And then the parents would side with Melissa. It's like the writers wanted to have their cake and eat it too. They wanted to make Melissa this good sister. So sometimes she would say like, I buried a body for you, Spencer, because I love you and I was trying to protect you and I'd do anything for you. But then at other points, they're wanting to make her this A suspect. And so she's got some really dodgy history with potentially the NAT club and Garrett and Jason. They're trying to make her the villain again, so it's like they can't make a decision. Remember that whole thing with the mask, the clay masks on the girl's face? There was one of Melissa. I don't know what happened with that, but see, they're trying to plant red flags and clues and red herrings involving Melissa, but also in the finale, trying to show that her and Spencer are buddy-buddy now. Melissa, in many ways, resembles Aria or Jenna, 
or null. Characters that have so much potential that are not used enough in the show. Actually, Jason, I think, would be on that list. All those characters should have had way more scenes. I don't know why they have scenes with that random guy who was doing the Karasimi group. We don't even know. Like, we don't even see him very often. Why are we wasting screen time with those characters or with characters like Sydney when we could be focusing on these pre existing characters who have so much? potential you know and bringing them into the night Alison died and certain events and mysteries so that's a real problem that I have especially with Melissa she had this resentment towards Spencer and this dislike for her that really should have been explained more because everything she said to Spencer in like the early seasons especially would be like this passive aggressive backhanded insult for no reason and Spencer in turn would then feel rejected by Melissa and lash out like she was going to sell Melissa's wedding ring whoa I know without her permission to give Toby his truck and she sent in a paper even though it was Melissa's paper and she'd plagiarized Melissa's work I know it would have been too predictable maybe for Melissa to have been a but she should have been on the a team that should have been made into a bigger deal I think she was at some point but no it should have been way more of a big thing of her helping a or working against Spencer because she she was way too dodgy to not and even though that would have been lame if the final reveal was Melissa as A, I still would have preferred it to a twin reveal because at least it would have felt more true to the story and what we know about Spencer. And Spencer has a lot of issues regarding Melissa but those were not explored properly. Was she jealous of Melissa? Was she bitter because Melissa was always being chosen first and Spencer was always second best. I don't know because I could see this this bitterness Spencer had but it was not you know fleshed out properly. I would understand maybe if Spencer was like I'm the ugly sister and Melissa's so beautiful but Spencer's a nice looking girl so it's clearly not that or I'm such a failure in school and I'm always flunking on my tests and Melissa's like the golden child she always gets top grades but that's literally not the case either Spencer is so academic Melissa is also very smart and then I was like well maybe it's that Melissa has this great dating life and Spencer is jealous but at numerous points boys pay attention to Spencer and want to date her so it can't be that. So literally, what is it? I was thinking, what are the reasons why I should be resentful? But those are not dived into properly, but I think there could be so much potential there. And it would have been so great to see a darker side of Spencer, a more unlikable side of Spencer, where maybe she has this completely illogical dislike of Melissa because the thing is throughout the show in a lot of the interactions Spencer is clearly the victim right Melissa's being mean to her and Spencer lashes out because Melissa's being so mean to her and you end up feeling bad for Spencer and that's pretty much it it's pretty one-dimensional Melissa's the bad cop Spencer's the good cop how cool would, would it have been if in like season three or four the writers pulled the rug out from under us and showed that Melissa has a reason to be so dark judgmental towards Spencer because maybe Spencer's done even more than just kiss Melissa's boyfriends. Maybe Spencer's done some really mean things that could make us question who to trust. I would really have loved that. In the early seasons in particular, Spencer's parents would always side with Melissa and whenever Spencer got angry at Melissa or said something hurtful, rather than her parents being like, Spencer, you know, I get why you'd feel like that because Melissa has treated you bad. Instead, they'd be like, Spencer, that was cruel go apologize they were always making Spencer out to be the bad guy to be shameful to be dirty how dare she when Spencer kissed Ren no 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 he kissed her by the way she just kissed him back she's not to blame in that situation as well he's this cute older guy he's like in his 20s she's a teenager he honestly should be fully blamed for that not Spencer but every time they would be angry at the guy but way more angry at Spencer and they were never really worried for Spencer's safety with these older men targeting her or checking in with her mental health checking she was all right treating her like the victim no they were treating her like the perpetrator and focusing all their efforts on reassuring Melissa and consoling Melissa and poor Melissa even with Ian all Veronica had to say about that was oh yeah we know Ian kissed you the police told us Spencer so yeah
There's not any real concern there. Spencer's mum was way better than Spencer's dad, but there were too many moments where she wasn't taking Spencer's side, even though she did have her badass and caring moments. And especially, you know, when she'd stand up for Spencer with that nasty cop, Wilden, or when she had that nice scene with Spencer talking about her cancer and blah, blah, blah. They definitely had some good moments, but there were some fishy ones too. I found it really weird the parents were letting Ian just hang around the house and move in with Melissa without actually thinking about Spencer, do you like Ian? And having a chat, how do you feel about Ian? Does he make you feel safe? Are you comfortable with letting him be in the house? Shouldn't you be a little bit worried? I mean, she's a teenager and he's a quite creepy man. Even with the dollhouse, the parents don't even seem that worried. They're going to talk to Alison about it and they're like, Alison, where's Spencer? Do you know where the girls are? I hope you're not lying to us, but they're just treating it like, they're lawyers and Alison's one of their clients and they're just, you know, having a chat and they're acting like it's not a big deal, but this is literally their daughter who's gone missing. They're very calm and they're not that worried. I did get you guys to send in your comments about the show and about the characters, so I will read some of them. No, I really loved reading through every single one of them and it's so fascinating hearing your thoughts, but I just selected the ones that best suit this video. Sega said, I think in a way Spencer's parents, Peter and Veronica, had a lot to do with the relationships Spencer got in. You can see this clear pattern in the earlier seasons where she goes for the not good for you type and the unavailable people and I think it revolves around her parenting. Pairing her with Toby was smart but you could see it came from this rebellion she had against her parents and then Ian and Ren because her sister has always been better in her parents eyes. I think that's interesting maybe it was a form of rebellion because her and Ren barely knew each other at all and they kissed like an episode or two in after around two conversations so it wasn't like she was looking for this emotional connection or taking it slow she was pretty happy to just kiss him and flirt with him so maybe it was her even subconsciously just rebelling and wanting to do something that she knew would spite her sister even the fact that she keeps taking an interest in him kind of here and there throughout the seasons says a lot canadian e-girl said i think the problem with spencer's storylines are that they never fully get resolved like the stuff with her family and her dad cheating i feel they kind of glossed over it when they should have made that into a bigger storyline especially because that could have been a bigger part of why Spencer's and Spencer and Aria were so close because they both had to deal with cheating dads. I feel like in the earlier seasons, she dealt with a lot of pressure from her parents that they never fully resolved. Either the pressure just kind of stopped. I agree, what happened with that? There are some continuity errors in terms of the evolution of her relationship with her family. And now we've talked about that, I want to move on and talk about another aspect of her character. We're going to talk about her reputation as the smart one because each of the girls have a label. What's good with Spencer being the smart one is she actually is smart, which I know sounds like, well, yeah, duh, obviously she's the smart one. But with characters like Aria, Aria is literally labeled even by Mona. Mona says it verbally as the compassionate, caring one. And Emily's meant to be like the loyal one. The writers couldn't be bothered to actually show, well, how is Emily loyal? Because often she wasn't even that loyal with some of the people she knew. With Emily, they're trying to call her loyal but she's actually weak and that's very different and then with Arya it was so odd because at points she was not compassionate or quirky at all but they were trying to kind of say that or show it through her clothes but when you actually look at the stuff she does it's like I don't know she's kind of a bitch sometimes so at least with Spencer she is actually academic and intelligent she does solve stuff she is witty she has some great one-liners so they do show her intelligence and she's very unique I've never seen really a character like her I think that sometimes her friends thought she was so intelligent they had these overly high expectations of her or 
thought she'd be perfect. So when she was in a weak place or when she was having her mental breakdown, they'd call her the weak link. Sunny said, my issues with her character are problems we generally see across the board. Number one, nothing about her ever really changes. The series finale Spencer is essentially the same or similar to pilot episode Spencer. And two, Marlene King was way out of her depth trying to portray these mental health issues. It's actually kind of confusing to me with all the groundwork they laid towards what could have been a major shift. We're shown so often that her family is competitive at a level that's toxic to Spencer. They can't even share good news and expect encouragement or praise. Even that's a competition. So yeah, that's part of her being smart, right? It stems from actually a lot of really bad toxic parenting. She developed a drug addiction because she felt like the expectation to constantly do more and always be outdoing someone was so overwhelming. She couldn't possibly keep up with everything she was expected to do and get a full eight hours of sleep. She was exhausted. It was clear to me that her role as the brainiac was a mask. She never seemed like she got any particular joy out of learning or out of her athletic endeavors. There isn't anything I can think of that she was passionate about. I agree, just pause for a second because she's never like, wow, this is so fun. It makes me so happy. I love learning and talking about why learning makes her feel so alive and she loves doing French and this. It was more like an obligation. By the seventh season, she's still the same high flying, high achieving, this is what I do, I'm academic, this is who I am. But it's like, but do you even enjoy it, Spencer? So it would have been nice to see some kind of change there with her character. I also get the sense she doesn't know what she's passionate about because the need to be competitive at everything she does has ruined that for her. Everything she did was just to get into a good school and bolster her resume. I guess going backpacking through Spain was maybe her way of branching out and trying her own thing, but it's still not the drastic change in character and priorities that I felt was called for. I was kind of hoping to watch her completely give up on academia for a while and exhibit a huge shift in priorities. She did get pushed to the point of breakdown, but even her breakdowns and relapses were entirely too composed compared to everything she was going through. And after she was done with them, she mostly went back to life as usual. And I guess where to assume her uni education went just fine and she didn't spiral out like most college kids with her background would have. I would have loved to see not just for like an episode, but maybe a whole season or two, her really completely changing what she thought she wanted. So backpacking through Spain is a good example. I think her and Caleb were talking about that, them holidaying. I wanted to see more of that, of her being like, screw this, I'm gonna go and be a free spirit. Misha said, I think Spencer was way overpowered. The whole thing with the telephone number she memorized because of the bird, etc. Yeah, what was that? That was so dumb. She was like, guys, it's not a song, it's a phone number. But her solutions came out of the blue and most I didn't really understand. All she ever did with Hannah was call her stupid. I don't remember any incident in which she had something nice to say about Hannah. Yeah, I get it. It's like they're trying too hard to show that she's smart to the point that she's literally carrying the whole show on her back. And also it got annoying after a while. I don't know if anyone else feels the same way, but I was re-watching the show recently and it's really starting to bug me. She's always the one leading the investigation, asking the questions, saying, let's go here guys, come on this way, going from route A to B, and and then pushing for answers and then going, hey, let's climb through the roof so we can do it this way. And then let's take photos of it so we have proof of blah, blah, blah. Being like the leader of the group with this stuff in terms of especially the mysteries of the show. And I didn't really care at first because I was like, she's the smart one. All the other girls have really good skill sets, but instead in every situation, Spencer's just the one asking the questions. And it was so refreshing then, like in season two, I think, when Emily actually put some a notes together and she kind of stitched them together and realized it spelled something out and I was like oh my god did Emily just do something useful that's crazy because most of the time Spencer was the one having the ideas and that's really annoying now let's talk about her relationships <laughs> Spencer and Ren, that was creepy. I've already made a whole video about the predatory relationships in the show and I'll link that down in the description along with my PLL playlist so you can go and binge watch all my videos about the show. In terms of Ren, he was gross. I love the actor, he's so charming, but oh my God, he's really creepy. And even in season one, there's a lot of love and trust for her. Season one, wait, you have Alex, Toby, Ren, Ian, is that a four whole love interest just in season one? Was there anyone else? I think that was it. 
That's a lot of love interests. That's too many just for season one. Spencer and Caleb is a thing in season seven that never should have happened. Oh my God, that was a waste. I've talked about that in other videos already, but it was pretty infuriating. And Spencer and Toby, I want to talk about for a bit. Now, Caleb and Hannah are by far my favorite character character couple on the show because they're the most healthy and the least toxic. They are the best and you can see there is a mutual kind of respect there and love there and they're more interesting as characters when they're in the same scene so they do work together and they're an unusual pairing but somehow I get it I think they work. I would say that Spencer and Toby are the second best main couple in the show until he joined the A team in season three that really tarnished the purity and innocence of their relationship and the explanation for him being on the A-team like oh I just wanted to protect you just doesn't make sense that was such a lazy explanation all he says is that and then they sleep together and there's not enough conversation that was very poorly done and it's not Toby's fault it's the writer's fault but still he allowed her to go to a mental institution why join the a team like how is that going to help anyone it's not like he found out who a was or something then i'd be like okay respect he clearly had a plan he did it he was useless what did he learn from doing that what what information could he tell her about oh i learned this i learned that nothing it really annoyed me too how she'd be having a rough time with toby and they'd be going through a rough patch or a breakup and immediately a new guy would fill the slot in Toby's place like she'd kiss Ren right after she and Toby had just broken up or that Colin guy would come in that Johnny guy would come in rather than just letting her being single and with the other girls I wouldn't bother so much especially with Hannah I know she has some self-esteem issues so it kind of makes sense but with Spencer she's meant to be like the independent smart woman too busy for boys how does she have the time I would love does she have a time Turner how does she have time to go and do all her academics deal with her shitty family and have this ever revolving door of eager love interests I honestly at 16 17 I barely had the time to brush my teeth her and Toby did lose some of their magic as as the seasons progressed and they just became a bit stale and boring especially when he was investigating his mom and what happened to her him and Spencer in that time were just a bit dead Toby became a cop that's when there was a notable shift in their relationship where it just wasn't quite as good as it was in the earlier seasons because he became a cop to you know get info and for her so he could I guess protect her grumpy just very negative at points and he was prioritizing his job over Spencer and that whole thing just did not make much sense finally because Spencer basically becomes the protagonist of the show and the main focus of the show you would assume that her relationship with Toby would be at the forefront of the show too and it would replace the Arya and Ezra drama but still Toby and Spencer never really take the lead as the main couple in the show even when Spencer is basically the main character and actually in the later seasons I can't even remember any memorable moments between them as a couple around season six and seven especially when they break up after the time jump I honestly forgot they were even supposed to be a couple because of their lack of interactions him dating Yvonne and Yvonne is that her name I don't know but he was never really talking to Spencer he was off with his fiance and then when you think they're having scenes together occasionally it's him and Spencer's twin why though what's the point of them being a couple if you're not even going to show them having scenes together and in the series finale all we get it's not good enough is her saying oh he's gonna stick around town for a while like oh and Arya being like oh my god you guys are such a cute couple and Spencer being like I know but you're not even a couple you don't even see them interacting barely at all in the series finale all you see is like one cute scene between them as if that's enough you don't get a kiss you don't get him saying hey let's run away together and her being like oh my god sure it's lack of effort lack of care the fans cared more than the writers did and that's a problem because when you're not putting the effort in and you're kind of half-assed about it get the fans to write the ending you know because at least they would put their 
their heart and soul into it and do a good job because all they could have done in the series finale, all they needed was him saying to her, hey, do you want to run away together? And her being like, what do you mean? And him being like, hey, there's a train to some cool part of America. Let's just go there and explore and blah, blah, blah. And her being like, wow, I've never been there before. Throw back to a scene they had around season one, very early on, right? Which would bring it all together with a nice little bow where she talked about wanting to run away. And how cool would that have been to then tie it together in season seven? That would have been so adorable. And it would have shown that they kind of remembered their earlier conversations as a couple and it would have been so cute. But instead, they don't even really interact in the end of the show. So how unsatisfying is that for all the Spoby shippers who really love them together? What a waste. Pedro said, I will never get tired of sharing how much I hate Spoby unpopular opinion right but pretty cool even if no one agrees with me they were adorable in the first two seasons i genuinely loved how it was spencer who ended up falling in love with him out of all the girls their progression through season one was beautifully done but after season three every time they were on screen together i wanted to bath he literally drove her to have a mental breakdown that made her unstable and depressed enough to willingly commit to an insane asylum i'm sorry i don't care if he did it for good reasons that's not romantic or thoughtful at all he should have backed out of that whole ordeal the moment he saw how much Spencer was hurting over it. Also, the writers really tried to integrate him into the main mystery through his mother, and it was insufferable. Literally no one cared. I surely didn't ask for it. It was a huge nuisance and him becoming a cop and suddenly caring about the law give me a break they didn't care or even attempt to make them cute or interesting in the later seasons it was just lame and exasperating and sadly i kind of agree they were so good in the earlier seasons you can see the visible decline and also it's so tragic they never really talked about the jenna and toby thing because the jenna toby spencer triangle was one of the most interesting parts of the show earlier and it was part of what made spencer such an amazing girl Friend. It was so empowering and badass in the earlier seasons to see Spencer standing up for Toby and hanging around the house and Jenna feeling really threatened like, huh, Spencer's moving in on my man and Spencer being a safe haven for Toby and him realizing he didn't need to stay in this abusive, controlling dynamic anymore and Spencer could be there for him, especially when you see that Jenna seemed secretly scared of Spencer for some reason and intimidated by her. That should have been played on so much more. More, and it would have shown Spencer to be actually quite a compassionate person for seeing Toby being in this dangerous situation and wanting to help him get out of that and save him. It would have been, normally I don't like the whole, you can save a guy thing, but actually in that situation, I think it's really beautiful to show the care that she feels for him. But instead, what even happens with that? It just sort of goes on the back burner and you almost forget that ever happened to Toby. You can tell the writers were way more invested in Caleb and Hannah's relationship than Spencer and Toby's because even when you look at the love triangle that happened between Spencer and Caleb and Hannah, Spencer was being jealous of Hannah and Hannah was being jealous of Spencer and it was just a triangle, but it wasn't like a love square. Toby was never brought into that realizing, oh my gosh, I'm so jealous Spencer's dating Caleb and I need to date Spencer now and him maybe ending things with Yvonne and then going and being with Spencer because he realizes how much he loves her. No, he wasn't even really involved in that because the triangle was used by the way, as a plot device to push Caleb and Hannah together because they couldn't think of any better way to do it. But it wasn't used to push Spencer and Toby together in turn. No. In fact, they were so lazy with Spencer and Toby, they weren't sure how to get them together. So at the last minute, they made a decision to kill off Toby's fiance, which is such lazy writing because I guess there can't be a more organic way for him to realize his relationship isn't working. So you have to force this tragedy storyline on him as if Toby hasn't already experienced enough tragedy in his lifetime. It's not just like Toby had kind of gone on a few dates with Yvonne. He seemed so into her. He seemed to really like her. Yes, his dynamic with her was different to his dynamic with Spencer, but it was still a healthy relationship and he wanted to marry her. They got married in the hospital because he realized how much he loved her and then she died. So it wasn't even like he would have chosen Spencer. You're left thinking, if Yvonne hadn't died, would he still be with her to this day? And so it makes his relationship with Spencer seem less impactful or special because she's not first choice. Okay, so I'm really loving this video, by the way. Can you just see my enthusiasm? I love talking about this show. So now let's move on to another topic. 
I know the friendly space ninja mentioned this in his video, I completely agree, and it was something that was bothering me, kind of subconsciously, I guess I couldn't really figure out exactly what it was, but I have done some thinking because I'm sure there's an explanation for it. In the first few seasons, especially the first three, Spencer was just my favorite character in the show. Not my absolute favorite, but she was always in the top three because she had so much to offer and was a little more complex in some ways than the other girls. But then in season, I'd say six and seven, it changes, especially after the time jump. One one reason that may be the cause of this is that she took on this new job and an interest in politics and so she had that sophisticated, classy, businessy feel to her but somehow that made her seem quite disconnected, like less warm, less funny, her sense of humour wasn't there as much and it was like she was more kind of uptight in this businessy role a lot and you didn't get to see as much of her sense of humor and whenever she'd giggle and tease Aria and cute moments like that so she lost some of her spunkiness. The season 7 love triangle also made her extremely annoying. Patrick said the writers really did do Spencer dirty in season 7. She was acting so out of character with Marco. She was weird around Marco wasn't she? She was just strange around him. She was so easy to give up and not fight. Her spirit was almost gone. They built up her character for what? To crumble at the very last mystery? I don't know if it was to make the twin thing more than it already was or what, but I really disliked what they did with her in season seven. I agree, something about her is more dull. The fight with her almost goes out a lot of the time. She's quite negative, she's crying about something, she's sad about something, which doesn't help. And AR said, I can't really pinpoint it, but there was something so unlikable about Spencer in season seven. It's like out of nowhere, she became very arrogant and controlling and wouldn't listen to anyone else's point of view because she always thought she was right. And she became really insensitive as well. It was like she was constantly rolling her eyes and this whole passive aggressive petty negative Nancy attitude came over her which I didn't like. The soft affectionate side of Spencer suddenly just disappeared. I agree where was her softness? Even in season seven it really pissed me off. She was talking to Hannah I think about Caleb which I thought was odd by the way why her but I think it was in the finale a bit awkward but fine maybe we'll give it a pass I don't know maybe it's showing her compassion or support for their relationship or something but it was a little weird anyway Hannah was saying she was stressed about it and then Spencer rather than just talking like a normal human being and being like oh I feel like this she was like remember the Greek fable of blah 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 <laughs> it means never look back but that just came across as so patronizing and annoying because it's like no one needs your historical references to literature right now. Can we actually have a normal conversation? Because the advice wasn't even good. It was very generic, wishy-washy. Oh, the fable means never look back when the girl opened Pandora's box, blah, blah, blah. Like, what? And one more comment from Jake, which I also think is a great potential reason, says, throughout almost the whole show, Spencer is a ball of fire that has to get to the bottom of things and always has to be right, which adds to who she is as a character. She starts becoming more sad and filled with desperation. I found that I was feeling bad for her more than rooting for her in season seven. She gets shot, she gets drunk and wasted, finds out she has a different mother and a secret twin. It just seems like they wanted the audience to feel bad for her rather than root for her success. She starts feeling like someone who needs help rather than the badass we know she is. And Jake's comment resonated with me so much and I think out of all the reasons she becomes unlikable, that's one of the biggest ones because it's just one big victim pity party. She finds out her mom isn't even her mom and she's devastated. Then she has a twin and she's having problems with Toby because obviously he's dating and engaged to someone else. So Spencer's feeling really just neglected about that. Then Caleb screws her over. He starts not answering her calls and he cheats on her with Hannah. So it's one big misery fest for Spencer. Even then in the later seasons, she's still, because of Aria on the A-team getting involved, having issues with her dad and her mom. I have only 11 pages of notes and I came into this thinking this is going to be a really short video which is odd because I thought my Spencer video would be long but now I'm talking I've still got so much to cover. I keep underestimating how long it will take for me to film these videos or how much I have to say and then I sit down and I realize how much I have to say. But 
anyway, I want to talk now about her storylines slash evolution throughout the show, just to give you an idea of the role she played throughout the show and the stuff she got up to. So in season one, Melissa is super patronizing, super smug and just infuriating in every scene she's in. And Spencer was actually really excited to have the barn. She was doing it up. And then Melissa suddenly was like, oh no, it's for me and Ren now. So that just sucks. Spencer's opinions clearly are not valued at all. And then when Spencer tries to actually share why she's upset about this, like, hey, I'm really annoyed because I thought I'd have that barn. Rather than Melissa being like, oh, really? I'm sorry. I want it too. But like, maybe we can negotiate. Instead, Melissa's like, oh, shut up, Spencer. Oh, really? You want the barn? Well, it's my way. No, no, no. Spencer and Ren kiss and A warns Spencer not to kiss Ren or A will go and tell people. And in the end, Melissa obviously found out anyway. A will go out of their way to sabotage Spencer's romantic relationship specifically, or A was targeting Spencer about Ian and you had the whole Ian mystery, which was obviously a romantic connection, the Ren stuff. Spencer obviously likes Toby in season one, but the girls are thinking that maybe Toby was A earlier on and not trusting him. So it's all linked together in a way that's really cool. And even in the beginning, like in season one, Spencer was hardcore judging Emily for liking Toby and hanging out with him. But then Spencer realizes she was wrong and apologizes to Toby, like, I'm sorry I judged you so harshly. We also learn that Spencer has quite a messy history with Allison and they see each other as rivals. They have this bizarre connection. Again, I needed to see be explored more. It's like they're both secretly jealous of each other or they're both trying to outdo each other all the time. And Spencer is the only one to really challenge Allison, which makes Allison uncomfortable because she was such an awful person in the beginning. She didn't like people seeing through her bullshit. And in season two, Toby does some yard work for the Hastings and digs up Spencer's old field hockey stick. And Spencer's thinking that's actually the murder weapon used to kill Allison, which is again fascinating because her dad is so weird around this hockey stick and actually throws it in the fire. Again, intriguing. Spencer's also trying to figure out if Jason's keeping someone in his house. What happened there, by the way? Who was he keeping in his house? because she thought she saw someone, he had blood. Was that just a red herring? That was trash, come on. And she finds out Jason is her brother in episode 19 and this information causes a rift in her family. She's also the one to find A's lair and to figure out who A is, which by the way, can we talk about that for a second? Why? <laughs> I'm all for Spencer getting to the bottom of things, but again, it's like the writers were going, Spencer's the smart one, so she should be the one to find out who A is in season two, but it's so much deeper than that. If anyone was to be by themselves with A, confronting A for the first time, it should have been Hannah. It was always so odd to me it was Spencer. I was like, but why should we care? Spencer had like two conversations with Mona before the reveal and kind of liked her, but not really. Whereas Hannah and Mona were friends, it should have been Hannah in that room confronting Mona. That would have been so creepy. You can join the A team where you can disappear, basically implying maybe she'd kill Spencer or make something bad happen to her. Why would she want Spencer on the A team? Wouldn't she want Hannah on the A-team and Hannah would have so much more motive and incentive to be on the A-team in some ways because Alison had always bullied her about her weight etc. So if she wants to talk to anyone about this she should be talking to Hannah about this but okay. And there was also a storyline of Spencer pushing Toby away because she was worried that A would hurt him and this was really weird to me that she'd like break up with him and not communicate with him about what was going on with A because if it's getting to a point with this online stalker where it's actually destroying your to personal relationships, maybe it's time to report it, you know? The girls not reporting this, I guess, is needed because otherwise how would the story function? But at the same time, come on, like, it was so weird. And in season three, the first half focuses on Spencer finding out who the black swan was, which she's thinking is her sister. And Spencer thinks Toby secretly hates them because he's on the A-team. So she's like, is he doing this to protect me? No, I think he just hates me. And she's devastated, she has a mental breakdown. And this isn't particularly unusual because Aria has one in season four as well. She kind of snaps and is in this really weird toxic thing with Ezra. So they do mirror each other in that sense. However, I think season three was the season where the writers and the showrunners realized Troy and Belisario can act very, very well. So they thought, 
she really works in the character of Spencer so we'll start making her more of the main character because she just works and will pull off anything. I would not have chosen for Spencer to have a twin. If anyone had a twin I would have made it Arya or Hannah. Hannah and Alison as twins or Arya and maybe Bethany Young or something. That's what I would have done 110% because Spencer could have had other stuff but she really didn't need to have a twin and if I had a twin I might have had one actually because it would have made sense. I'd use it to like explain plot holes but they wouldn't be like the final A you know but I reckon the reason why they just assumed oh yeah of course it's Spencer that needs to have the twin is because Troyan can act so well they thought she can pull it off even if we don't do a very good job but anyway in season three Spencer's taken to Radley which in some ways makes sense because they have so many traumatic experiences but they're not really emotionally they just deal with it so well they're not really having as many mental breakdowns as you would expect so it's really good in some ways for Spencer to snap because that's realistic and you wouldn't be able to cope with it and Mona somehow convinces her to join the A-team and now this storyline only lasted for around an episode which is such a waste. It's as disappointing to me as the dollhouse. Those were the two most disappointing aspects of the show for me in terms of storylines and wasted potential with storylines because that should have been dragged out for like half a season in my opinion. It would have been so interesting to see Spencer be a double agent and try to figure out okay who's A? How can I get information from being on the A-team? And we always have so many questions throughout the show of how does the A stuff work? One of the A members would come and do something creepy and leave you a message but it would have been good to see Spencer being on the A team and learning how A manages to tell all of their comrades and their employees okay you do this you do that and how commands are passed and how that whole network works and how the meetups happen and how stuff's organized so that was a real wasted opportunity and in season four Spencer supported Toby in finding out the truth about his mother even though she had some issues with how he went about it and she started to abuse amphetamines and we know she struggled with drugs at points so this is a real problem that she has we know that she was addicted to them the summer prior to Allison's disappearance and because of that it undermined Spencer's credibility when she was suspecting Ezra of doing some dodgy stuff and the girls dealt with it in a really nasty way they were yelling at her acting like she was this idiot and again expecting her to be perfect all the time Hannah calling her a speed freak acting like she was this loser and how dare she rather than having compassion for her. Maddie Sharp said you should talk about how poorly they handled her addiction storyline. They should have either never done it or elaborated on it more. They send this dangerous message that addiction is something you just get over because they killed the plot so fast. In season seven when all the girls are of age and casually drinking they could have had Spencer go a little overboard or portray her as not doing well with substances especially in the scene where she's drunk with a detective. They made that out to be a one-time thing where she gets drunk and kisses Marco but we know she's had substance dependence issues. I wanted them to use that as a character progression device or something meaningful but it was just an excuse to bring in the hot guy Dean. They also did this to Hannah which you talked about in her video. Yes, this was handled I think insensitively and it was a little trashy and exploitative. In season five with Alison's return Spencer has a hard time getting used to Alison dominating. Spencer has this whole thing with Melissa trying to figure out if Melissa was trying to protect her and the night Alison disappeared etc and in the dollhouse Spencer is tormented with the idea of hurting others which definitely should have been developed more because she woke up covered in blood and she was like oh my god did I hurt someone did I kill someone she's got this real issue with not being able to trust her own judgment and in season six she starts to investigate the Karasimi group and who Charles is again leading the investigation and in season seven Spencer's shot by Uber Ray and Mary Drake is her mom. The finale is completely a Spencer filled narrative to the point that the other characters and girls have no relevance in the A plot or in the reveal and are like background characters. We found out who A is? Cool! No, no, this person's been haunting you. You should be so involved and invested and instead they're like on the side, except for Spencer. <laughs> links to my next thing I want to talk about which is Spencer as the main character and it wasn't like that especially in for instance the pilot episode I mean she's just one of the girls none of the other girls stand out particularly compared to her they've all got something going for them it's not like oh she's the main character it's like this is an ensemble cast if anything interesting was happening it was with Spencer especially in let's say season four onwards around season five I started getting the feeling that Spencer was like the most important person and all the good interesting stuff would just happen 
happen to her. This really takes away from the potential of the other girls because everything good or interesting is given to Spencer. They're not balanced, they're not equal. For instance, if you had to choose which girl should I play, it should be really hard because they all have so much to offer. But I could imagine most people wanting to be Spencer because her storylines were so good. Around season three, you could sort of see it happening where they were realizing, wow, Spencer's really good and they were giving her good storylines. But around season five, that's when it's so painfully obvious. Thomas T said, cross fingers that this time my comment or some of it will be in the video. I think Spencer's a great character, but at some point she became the writer's favorite and they put way too much in her. In the first season, Spencer stood out from the other girls by becoming the leader after Allison went missing. She's the only liar who could stand up for herself against Allison. This was a good explanation why she's quite a main target in the first four seasons. But after season four, the writers put too much on her and Hannah. And by the seventh season, Allison became irrelevant, which is so bad by the way, basically became one of Emily's love interests and Spencer became the most important character. I think the main reason it happened is Troyan's acting. If anyone had to be the main character or if anyone had storylines that were always linked back to them and the important stuff always linked back to them, it should have been Alison because she's the heart of the show. That's why I want to make a video about Alison. The writers, it's like they forgot who they were speaking to. They forgot what the message was, who the main characters are supposed to be, who's meant to be relevant here, who's important here, because if they just stopped and thought about that, they would realize it's Allison, not Spencer. She was already so important in like seasons one to four because she had so many things linked to the De Laurentiis family. Jessica, I remember, had this really weird dislike of Spencer that was already enough to make Spencer seem important and to stand out. You didn't need to take it any further. She was already interesting enough. She was obviously neighbors to the De Laurentiis family. She had this strange connection with Jessica I wanted explored way more and with Jason and her dad had all these secrets and this weird connection with Jessica. So there were already links there. Spencer had a weird connection with Allison. Spencer already stood out. I especially hated in the finale how the whole show, you don't think Spencer's going to be that important. You don't think she's going to mean that much. But throughout the seventh season, you're noticing how many things are just involving her and seeing her one-on-one -on -one scenes with Mary Drake and looking at photo albums. And you're like, huh, where's this going? And suddenly it's like, Spencer is everything. Everything leads back to Spencer. Spencer. She's got a twin and the finale is just her having this face off Spencer versus the twin blah 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 and the other characters who by the way we should care about who are important are put in the background. Oh my god, I hate it. I wanted this to be about the four main girls all being equally balanced, not about Spencer purely by herself. And I hated how it's just her there as this A reveal takes place and she's hearing about the motives and the other characters could not be further from the action. Obviously half the importance is the reveal and who the character is, but the other half is the execution and the way it's done. And one of the biggest problems with the twin reveal is that the character herself isn't even scary or a good villain. First of all, we don't know her, but she was extremely childish and no one really talks about this. But if you look at the facial expressions that she's making throughout the episode she's in, she's giggling a lot. She's like a child or pleased with herself for her little revenge plot as if everything's one big game, but she doesn't even seem particularly vengeful or powerful. I was never scared of her. I was never worried that she would hurt any of the girls or cause any damage and she's just so incredibly childish she just behaves almost like Cece did like a broken kid who didn't have a family who was a bit neglected and there's nothing really scary about that you just end up feeling sorry for her and she was so obsessed with Spencer wanting to live her life and being all excited for it it was like she was a kid playing dress up her desperation to be included and to feel like something important was written on her face and every scene she she was in to the point that you felt embarrassed for her like who is this loser does she have a life why is she trying to live Spencer's life she's like an obsessed Ariana Grande copycat or something rather than us actually being like wow this girl's really scary and she's gonna do some really bad things so that was another huge problem I had Spencer is so capable and so smart I never had any fear that she would not be able to get out of the situation and I was hoping that her twin would be even more intelligent than Spencer so you'd be really free freaked out. Her twin seemed really stupid as well. She was just dumb. Her plan was not good. She, why did she kidnap Ezra? She could have just killed him. Like she wasn't hardcore. She wasn't 
really doing anything that scary. If anyone should have been linked to the twin plot, it was Alison and Hannah. They had a strange connection. When you look at how similar they are, when you look at that story Alison told of the twins on Halloween and how Hannah was there listening to the story, it actually makes a lot of sense. Arya, I don't think really should have had a twin. I think any issues and inconsistencies involving Arya were more to do with Arya herself. Megan made a great point and said, I hate the twin thing for so many reasons, but if there had to be a twin, I wish it was someone other than Spencer's. It would have been so interesting to see Spencer slowly figure out that one of the liars had been replaced by an evil twin because she's always supposed to be the small one. Exactly. What if Hannah had a twin and Spencer was like, hmm, figure out the first few clues that would have made sense because she's meant to be the smart one, right? So utilize that. If we're meant to believe she's so bloody intelligent all the time and she's like this Einstein level of genius, fine, prove it. Show us, make her be the first one to go, huh, something's off here. I know it's a little overdone, Spencer figuring everything out, but if she really is meant to have like a superhuman level of intelligence, give her the opportunity to do that. She can't do that if she's the one with the twin in a lot of aspects, or if she had to be the one with the twin, don't have the twin kidnap her for her to figure it out. Have her be figuring it out herself just through talking to people and Jenna being like, hey, didn't you talk to me the other day? Or Ren being like, hey, didn't I see you at the airport? And Spencer being like, no, what do you mean? And figuring it out, at least that would show her intelligence. Then Megan said, I wish that the actual personalities of the lies were more relevant to it because it could have been any one of them being held prisoner with exactly the same writing. And the scene would be exactly the same. And when I read that, I suddenly realized that this was one of the reasons why I hated the twin reveal so much, even though I couldn't figure out what it was. You nailed it. That's exactly it. It's so impersonal. It doesn't feel inevitable. Like, yes, this had to happen to Spencer. This, of course, makes so much sense. No, because let's say you took Spencer out and you put Aria in that scene or Emily in that scene and Emily's twin was being like, yeah, we were separated at birth, blah, blah, blah. And they just kind of made it work, changed a few things. It would, the scene would be exactly the same. Emily's reaction would be exactly the same and nothing would feel special about it or like this was meant to happen. Spencer didn't really figure out she had a twin. She was just kidnapped and it was actually more Mona figuring that out and Toby figuring that out. This story in some ways should be very character driven, but this wasn't character driven because if it was, they would have given even Spencer the opportunity to shine in that finale. Thomas T continuing with their previous comment said if they wrote the twin reveal themselves they would make Alex be involved with events of the former seasons like murdering Bethany Young, make Alex the masked tuxedo in the dollhouse, make Alex the Black Widow, tie Alex back to season one. And so at least it would be like, oh, okay, this makes sense and it does fill in some of the gaps. Instead of calling her Alex, name her Avery and say that she's the same Avery who used to be shower Harvey's friend who got a mental breakdown and was put in a mental asylum. Spencer should be the bait for AD in the end of season six. Spencer should have been the one who was kidnapped. Then Spencer should have managed to escape AD in season seven. But in the end of season seven, it turns out that Spencer never escaped. Maybe she died. She was still AD's hostage. And the Spencer who was with the other liars the entire season was her twin. I agree. It should have been Spencer who was kidnapped. Why was Hannah kidnapped? If AD wanted to kidnap anyone, they would have kidnapped their actual twin, don't you think? Because they care about their twin. They don't care about Hannah. They don't give a shit about Hannah. Sagar said the twin thing I thought could have been good and it could have been made into a really scary self-image story since Spencer was always the one with her shit somewhat together. I think I think where they went wrong was having no build up for Spencer to have a twin. There was build up for a twin in general, the little twins in Ravenswood, the twin story Allison tells, but none of that really revolved around Spencer. So in a sense, it would have been better if Ali or Hannah had a twin since they were a part of the stories. Yes, thing is when those stories were being told with Allison telling Hannah the story about the twins, it was Allison and Hannah together. Whereas with Spencer, it's like, yeah, I mean, anyone could have had a twin, you're not special. In some senses, I felt like the finale was trying to make everything about Spencer and be super dramatic without even doing things that actually made sense or were logical. So it was focused more on shocking us than doing things that actually added up. For instance, the fake house that Ezra and Spencer find themselves in. They think they've escaped, but then they realize that they're in this house 
with this blue sky around them and trees that are all fake and it's not actually real. They're in like a warehouse designed to look like the outdoors. But why? What was the point of this? What was the reason for Alex Drake to do this? Was this some kind of clever joke? Like why would she even want to do this? Alex's reveal as well was way too rushed. I've talked about my problem with the twin reveal in my Everything Wrong with PLL video. I've talked about it in other PLL videos I've made in general, but they gave themselves 20 minutes to explain her backstory. They had to try and show different images of the scenes in the past and things Alex has done pretending to be Spencer and then correlate that with the present day and they didn't give themselves any time to show really enough of Spencer reacting to it or Spencer adjusting to it, enough of Spencer talking to her family about it and there's no emotional impact and the gang solves Spencer's disappearance within like two seconds. They have so many gaps to fill in and so many things to answer in too short a space of time and the result result is one big trashy failure and Alex was clearly obsessed with Spencer, wanting to date Toby, thinking Toby was in love with her, wanting to replace Spencer, which is a very specific type of stalker so clearly she had some issues she needed help with. Alex has no relevance, we don't know her, we don't care about her and as a result it does Spencer a disservice, it does Spencer dirty because why do we care if Spencer has a twin, we don't even know Alex? I'd rather Alison was big A because that feels inevitable and if let's say Alex was AD. It would make sense for Alison revealing herself to be A to Spencer because maybe she wanted to get Spencer on her own because she hated Spencer so much. We know they had problems with each other in the past. It would make sense for Spencer to be the one to figure out who AD was and that it was Alison because Alison had such an issue with Spencer. Who's smarter? Who can outwit the other? Always competing. It would make sense if Alison was all smug in the finale like see Spencer we've always hated each other but look I win the game okay. That would make more sense right? Whereas a twin is like no one cares. Those are my overall thoughts. The writers clearly put Spencer on a bit of a pedestal and thought she was way cooler than she was, forgetting about the message they're trying to send, forgetting about what made their show so special, which is it's about the girls, them and their connection and them being tortured by A. Not about Spencer, it's all about me, I'm being tortured and oh my god it's my twin. No, it's not about Spencer being the main character with her girls on the side being tortured by A. It's about all of their shared collective experiences as friends dealing with the shared trauma of being stalked by A. So making the finale so Spencer centered trashes the connections the girls have and what makes their experience so special and it makes it seem like it's really just a Spencer that's suffering in the finale when really all of the girls went through this traumatic experience of being stalked, not just Spencer. So their involvement in the finale and how they're linked to AD should be just as relevant as Spencer's link to AD. The twin thing was so tied to Spencer, it's like the writers couldn't actually be bothered to focus more on how the twin would link to the other girls or what the twin's problem with the other girls would be because there was no real motive for the twin wanting to torture the other girls and implant Emily's egg in Allison. Why would the twin care? She doesn't even know them. And this is kind of a natural bias I think with the writers. Spencer was obviously the favourite so they were putting way more focus on her storylines and almost forgot about the other characters. This happened in like the Harry Potter series with Ron who got way less attention because the writers and screen people clearly cared more about Hermione than about Ron and they just preferred her character but then they weren't actually focusing so much on Ron's characterization because why would they? they're not really bothered with him so stuff's gonna slip their mind. My point is when you have a favorite character or someone you just really love writing for that may actually come at the cost of your other characters because the other girls really lost some good storylines because Spencer was getting everything and there was a point where I was really sick of her leading the investigations all the time and coming up with all the ideas. It was just subtle things even the way that when Alison came back in season five Emily was really defending Alison and being there for her and Spencer was like Alison is gambling with our lives, she's not being honest with us, she's making us go along with a story that's not true and Spencer was a lot more happy to turn on Alison which again makes her stand out from the other girls and have a mind of her own and she was just thinking differently and Emily was like Alison's not that bad okay she's hurt and Spencer was like I'm sorry 
what? And you could tell Spencer did not buy it. And that's just how she's always been. And I never had a problem with it until I realized it was happening too often. Even with Spencer getting arrested for Bethany Young's murder and that connection she had there. And I would really much rather the storylines were spread out evenly amongst the four main girls. In many ways, Alison is way more of a relevant and important symbolic character than Spencer is. So Alison, in some senses, should have been getting more attention. Please give this video a big thumbs up because it helps me out so much with my channel and I'd really appreciate it so this video can reach more people. And there are some other PLL themed videos I want to do. So subscribe if you want to see more of those videos. Follow me on Instagram for more behind the scenes stuff and I will see you guys for my next video. Mwah!